Hey there, everybody. This is Sleuthy Teacher back today for episode three of Nancy Drew number six, The Secret of the Scarlet Hand. This is very potentially our last episode for Secret of the Scarlet Hand. We may very well finish it today. Where we left off in our last episode, we found out that the priceless Pakal Jade Carving has been stolen from Beach Hill Museum. Upon further investigation, we find out that other various locations have also had their jade carvings stolen. Prudence Rutherford in Topeka, Kansas, and the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center in New Mexico. On top of this discovery, Henrik took a fall off of the temple and is now suffering from amnesia. So much going on. Let's just get into the game. <clears throat> All right, so where we left off last time, we just got off the phone with Prudence Rutherford and she is going to be sending us her jade carving necklace. So we're going to start by setting time forward here and we're going to go talk to Henrik. We have another photograph for his wall to help him reacquaint himself with reality, as well as a few questions for him. All right, so notice we have the handprint. His name is Henrik Vanderhuhn. He's 61 and a half years old, lives in Washington, DC. He's an epigraph, epigrapher. He is divorced with no children and he is allergic to chicken and bee stings. gotta be a drag to be allergic to chicken can you can you imagine that there's so many food different foods that you're missing out on well look who it is ready to do some memory work Henrik I brought you a picture this will help you to remember that face he's as familiar as my own feet totally can you remember the last time you saw him Pakal Nancy this is the stolen carving isn't it and I'm the one who took it. I must have. But why? Oh, Pakal, what could I have meant by this? Oh, snap. So Henrik stole the Pakal carving. Think, Henrik. Where's the carving now? I can't remember. Easy, Henrik. The answers are in your head. You just need to find them. It's still in the museum. Why would you break into the display case and steal the carving only to leave it in the museum? To protect him. I had to protect him. Oh, Pakal. Something is going on at that museum, a devious plot. I was the only one who could stand in the way. What kind of plot? Forgive me, Nancy, but when I woke up in this hospital bed, I didn't even know my own name. Perhaps the only thing I can offer you is this key. It was found in one of my pockets when I was brought in. Yes, this could be the key to everything. Maybe that key goes to the lock where you hid the Pakal. I haven't a clue. Take the key now, Nancy. Find out what it opens and return to me, please, with some answers. You can count on me, Henrik. In the meantime, I'll sit with my friend Pakal and see if he will tell me anything new. You must keep this to yourself for now. It's your only hope of getting to the bottom of this. One of the pieces that was stolen from the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center was a jade carving with an unusual glyph on it. Do you remember translating it? I can't remember. Did you use Joanna's name last week to place an order for Cinnabar with Keep It Real Restoration? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. Do you think Joanna is behind the other thefts? Who knows? Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. I don't know. You rest up. I'll be back. Be careful. Trying to get information out of him is like trying to get a kid to tell you what they did that day. What did you do today? I don't know. What'd you learn today? I don't know. What do you want for supper today? I don't know. Okay, so we have the key and this should get us into Henrik's desk. So let's go check that out. So how's everybody doing today as I navigate over to his desk? I'm currently sitting under my nice warm Nancy Drew blanket 
that one of my students was so sweet and got me for Christmas. It is so absolutely beautiful. And uh, I'm enjoying a nice cup of hot apple cider on this incredibly cold and just not nice day. So, how's it going? How you doing? All right. <clears throat> so I have some translation notes on the glyph that was used on the note that was left behind. The notebook. Number stations, 2050 hertz transmits a series of five digits in Spanish with each transmission starting with atención, atención. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve. Write down the last three digits of the series and add a zero to it to get a four digit number each of the original five digits and add the sum to the four digit number from the first step. This is the station smugglers take messages on. Okay. So if the station number gives 56123, then the smuggler station is 1247. That is zero. What? zero at the end of the last three digits. So one, two, three, zero. And all the digits together, 17. So one, two, three, zero plus 17. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know why that didn't uh, make sense the first time around. Also, sorry if I am clearing my throat multiple times today. My goodness gracious, my voice is just not cooperating. Okay. And then we need to use the Nahuatl word for snake enter it in Morse code and then send the code word that's also in Morse code okay so leche is the word we're gonna need to use at some point but we also need to learn the Nahuatl word for snake hmm. looks like I need to find someone who speaks Nahuatl okay so I'm gonna get this closed 7 16 72 hiked with big bunny all day temperatures in the 100s water scarce but highland region is beautiful and pristine except for bunny's incessant commentary even spotted a quetzal, quetzal flying amongst the branches a rare treat it symbolizes freedom and wealth tail highly prized by the maya 722, cross paths with an old shaman, eager for some relief from Big Bunny, accepted old man's invitation to eat. Old man, Vicente, gave us very strong tea to which Big Bunny reacted negatively. He kept shouting, bunny rabbits, flaming bunny rabbits, return of the repressed. Even, or once even pounced on the floor to try to catch one, but there was nothing there. Vicente thought this was very funny. I nearly expired from embarrassment. Tea had no unusual effect on me. Interesting. Oh, hard rain last night. Shared a tent with Big Bunny out of kindness. Pity. What does he eat? I nearly suffocated. Uh, old man told us legend has it that the highlands are haunted by the spirit of a um, mox collie. Understand most uh, translated for Big Bunny. Here is the legend as best as I can gather. At the height of Bacall's reign, a royal Maya scribe, Siwapili Amox Kali wrote an account of the Maya that somehow defamed Pakal's name. She disappeared along with all traces of her work. The rumor was that Pakal banished the scribe and her writings to the far reaches of the netherworld. Highland elders swear that she has haunted these hills for centuries and will not rest until her writings are unearthed and her name is restored to dignity. Banished, ha! Huh? If only Pakal were so lenient. Yeah, I don't think she was banished. Would have enjoyed the story much more without my unwant or without the unwanted outbursts of my foolish sidekick. Quite the tale, though. Imagine how amazing how it has survived somehow over hundreds of years. Seven twenty-three. Big Bunny wants to start small-time smuggling racket to pay off his college tuition. Ugh, he's the last person I'd want for a partner in crime. But I do need some way to fund my own studies. I wonder if I could stand it. 729 travels today have been uneventful sun is hotter than ever tomorrow we return to base camp cannot wait to be rid of my companion i suspect he's really a dog in bunny clothing <laughs> yuck 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 all right so interesting some notes 
on his travels. I'm not make sure. Okay, that must be it. All right. Okay, so here's the radio that we have to use. Okay. I think it was 25th. Let's try this again. So it should be. Four zero or five zero? Four zero? Why didn't I read it? Seven zero seven zero one eight seven. Okay, that's not right. Okay, I think it was twenty fifty. We'll look. It's locked. The more I think about it, I think it was 2050. Yep, 2050. Alright. Uno, so it'd be eight three two seven one. So we have to take two seven one and put a zero after it, and then we have to add all of these numbers together and then add it to that. So eight plus two is ten. Three plus seven is ten. So ten plus ten is twenty. Plus one is twenty one. So two thousand seven hundred and ten plus twenty one is going to be two thousand seven hundred. 31. So that is going to be the number that we it's need. Locked. Now ask me if I remember what to do with that number. Of course I don't. Why would I write down notes? That makes way too much sense. Oh my gosh. Okay. Station that the smugglers will take messages on. Okay. So now we have to find the Nahuatl word for snake because we're going to need it at some point. And memory serves our favorite surly member at the consulate. Uh, no snuff bottle. So let's go bother Alejandro, shall we? Okay. Hopefully he's in a helpful mood. Buenos dias. Have you heard? The police received an anonymous tip, and they're considering Joanna a prime suspect in the Bacall theft. They've taken her in for questioning. I called in that tip. She lied about the cinnabar, and you may not know this, but she has jeopardized the museum's finances with all of her wheeling and dealing. Why should she not be questioned? How do you know about museum finances? I have my sources. I need to know the Nahuatl word for snake. Can you help me? What do you need that word for? Oh, I need it to send a message by ham radio. It's a long story. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I hear you have been a great help to Henrik. I wonder if you can help me improve my memory, too. What are you talking about, Alejandro? I am almost certain that the provenance documents for the Pakal carving were falsified. I have asked Joanna to see the documents, but she evades me. If you can find that file in her office and bring it to me, I think it might help my memory of Nahuatl a lot. That feels very manipulative. First you tell me you are unconcerned about the theft of the Pakal carving, and now you have an urgent need to see the provenance documents? Is it just me, or is this a little suspicious? If I can determine that the provenance documents are a fraud, this will be the first major step toward legal repatriation of the artwork, whenever and wherever it resurfaces. Okay, Alejandro. I'll see what I can do. I feel my Nahuatl coming back to me already. Do you know what Siwapili means? 
princess or lady. Now, if only I could remember the word for snake. I should get back to the museum. Goodbye. Okay, so in order for him to be literally anything but useless, uh, we have to find this paperwork and give it to him. Okay, so thankfully Joanna is not here. There it is. Okay, ancient king of Palenque, Jade. First true king. Sold by Serpentine to Felix and Miranda Peterson of Connecticut. Cool. Alright. So, let's see here. Lots of different... Wow! $800,000 for the Maya Jade carving. And then insurance was an extra 10000 That's a lot of coin. Dear Taylor, as you may have heard, my longtime clients Felix and Miranda Peterson both passed away this summer in the heat wave. Felix was 89 and Miranda was 91. By all accounts, they had lived extraordinarily full lives. Still, it's too bad their air conditioning unit went on the blink when it did. And I and all the citizens of Greenwich will miss them dearly. As you know, the Petersons had no children. Per their instructions, I am to arrange the auction of their estate and donate the proceeds to charity. As you also may know, the Petersons had a fabulous art collection, including several pre-Columbian artifacts that may be of particular interest to you. The auction will be held on February 7th. All right. And there's the title paperwork. All right. So this is what Alejandro was looking for. Let's bring it back to him. Yo, my dude, I got the stuff for ya. Hello, Nancy. You have a special delivery for me, I hope? Promise me that you'll take good care of these documents. Good work, my friend. I suppose you would like something in return? A deal's a deal. The Nahuatl word for snake is coatl. C-O-A-T-L. C-O-A-T-L. All right. Muchas gracias. Gotta go. Adios, Nancy. All right. So now that, whoops, we have, come on. There we go. Now that we have that information, we can use the ham radio. But I think before we do that, since we're at the consulate, the hotel is relatively close. We're gonna go here first because we have that floppy disk that we got from Henrik's computer. I don't know what that is. Wow, I guess we'll do that another time. Okay. To the radio! Send a message. Okay, so turn this on. The radio tube went out. Of course it did. Conveniently timed, huh? Okay. It's okay though because there is a ham radio in the museum that we can use. For the radio tube. It's locked. So, it's locked. It's locked. It's locked. You said that multiple times, Nancy. It's locked. Seriously? How do I? How? How? It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. I wonder who I would talk to about that. Let's see here. I don't remember that being locked. Okay, let's see here. Is there a storage room here, maybe? I, d 
doubt it, but we'll look. Nope, those are the notes. So it's not that. Um, there we go. Okay, and we can't reach any of that. I genuinely do not recall needing a key specifically for this part of the game, but I suppose it has been quite a bit of time since I've played this. You have voicemail! Nancy, it's Joanna. The police are done giving me the third degree, but now the board has suspended me. To, to make a long story short, I'm forbidden to set foot in the museum. Could you please call Franklin Rose and try to reason with him? If we don't get a move on, this exhibit is going straight down the tubes. To replay messages, press zero. Speaking of tubes, can I use the radio tube? Okay, maybe Franklin can give us permission. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew, calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, you must be psychic. I was just getting ready to call you myself. As a matter of fact, I have been brushing up on my mind reading. Well, thank goodness I've got you on my side. I feel I should apologize for the situation that's going on at the museum, dear. I really did think we were setting you up with a nice little internship, a breather from your casework. But instead, it looks like we've fed you to the lions. Well, in all my travels, I still haven't found a mystery-free zone, Mr. Rose. Speaking of travel, I got a postcard from your father in Ouagadougou. Apparently, Burkina Faso has become the cultural darling of West Africa. He must be having quite an adventure. Like father, like daughter. Anyway, Mr. Rose, I'm calling about Joanna. I think I know what you're going to say, Nancy. Um, let me be frank. Joanna Riggs has been in the doghouse with the board for months. Her thirst for acclaim has led her to gamble the future and the reputation of Beach Hill time and again. Now that we've lost the Pakal carving, one of our most notable pieces, well, she's just got to be stopped. But with Henrik in the hospital and Joanna suspended, how can we possibly get this exhibit off the ground? Leave that to me. We'll postpone the opening if we have to. Look, I've got a client waiting, Nancy. What we need now is for you to take up the slack. I've spoken to the rest of the board, and we've agreed that the best thing is to put you in charge. So now the intern is making all the choices. But Mr. Rose, I don't think Joanna is responsible for the Pakal theft. She shouldn't be punished. She's not being punished, dear. In legal terms, we're suspending her in abundance of caution, so she won't do any more damage to Beach Hill's reputation or her own. We're counting on you to catch this thief red-handed. Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding, kiddo. If you can get the Pakal back, we'll see about giving Ms. Riggs another chance. That seems fair, doesn't it? It's a deal, Mr. Rose. Bye, kiddo. Okay. So we're in charge. Does that mean that I can take it now? It's locked. How can it be locked? It's locked. <sighs> Maybe Henrik will have the key. Let's go talk to him. Rather than spam clicking it 40 bajillion more times. Alright. Henrik, you're not being helpful. Wake up. Let's try calling Choco Candy again. 
It's me, Nancy. What's new? It's pouring rain. George and I are in the middle of a heated game of Go Fish, and I'm winning. Don't believe a word she says, Nancy. Last hand, I made mincemeat out of her. Anyway, we don't want to make you homesick. How's the internship going? Everything was going great until someone broke into a display case and stole one of the museum's most valuable artifacts. A jade carving of King Pakal. Who was King Pakal? He's considered one of the great Maya rulers. He reigned at the height of the Maya civilization. So what happened? Well, apparently the civilization was never quite the same after he died. No, silly, with the theft. What happened with the theft? Who are your suspects? Do you have any clues? Easy, ladies. Let's just say that so far, I have more questions than I do answers. But don't worry, I'm on the case. There goes your low-key internship. Honestly, Nancy. It never will cease to amaze me how one girl can cross paths with so much trouble. Okay, let's see. Detective Drew, requesting hint, please. See if Henrik remembers anything about his password. And while you're at it, put that unfinished riddle translation up on the memory board. Maybe the star glyph man will make some headway on it now that he's got a clear head, so to speak. Bess, just kidding. Okay. I'll talk to you later, ladies. We're rooting for you. Yeah, you're doing great. Okay, I forgot that we grabbed that note on the glyphs from Henrik's desk. So we'll run back, we'll drop that off. And then we'll go from there. Are you kidding me? Well, there goes that thought. Let's see if Sinclair is still in his office. Any news? I'd better get going. Thanks for stopping by. Well, cool. okay. Well, we'll go back to the museum. We'll check to see if we have that package from Prudence, and I guess we'll go with that. See if that fixes it. I guess it is back to the hotel we go. All right, let's move ahead and see if that makes a difference. be up and if he's not we can at least drop off that paper that was not where I wanted to go ah uh, well we'll check and see if the necklace is here Must be some sort of trigger for Prudence's package to get dropped off, and we just haven't gotten it yet. All right. Oh, of he's sleeping. Okay. bit of a holding pattern here until he wakes up. I'm trying to think if there's anything we can do in the meantime. I think. Let's see here. Let's see if we have any 
voicemails. You have no voicemail. We'll try calling Franklin. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. Would you like to try back later? Sure. Thank you for calling Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. Okay, so there goes that thought. Let's... I did not plan very well for this. Let's do... Let's see if he's awake now. Hey, look at that. Stone. That's the password we were looking for. All right. Nancy, you have brought me back to my work. What have you remembered? I've been working like a fiend. Look at the board. I did. Where There's Henrik's password. This has something to do with the plot at the museum, Nancy. I'm sure of it. Who is this whisperer of silent secrets? The whisperer came from a distinguished line of royal scribes. I can't seem to remember her name. But I do recall that she wrote an account of Maya history that greatly angered Pakal because of the way it depicted his ascent to the throne. So this is referencing the story that he heard when he was out on that expedition with Big Bunny that we read in his desk. What did the scribe say? That Pakal had bad fashion? From the age of 12, when he came to the throne, Pakal claimed to be divinely appointed the first true authentic king of the Maya. Then, the Whisperer came along and wrote that Pakal was only king because his mother pulled some strings. It was quite a blow to Pakal's image. What happened to the scribe's writings? Pakal swore that the Whisperer's words would never see the light of day. He put her body, her soul, and her writings all in a tomb and locked it up tight. Wait, Henrik, a prison of stone? We're not talking about the monolith, are we? That's the idea. Does anyone else know about this? Good question. I'm certain that there's a dirty rat trying to get into that tomb. But this is where my memory fizzles out. If I could only figure out why I took the Pakal. This is important information, Henrik. Don't you think the police should be informed? Please don't breathe a word of this. There's too much at stake. Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. I don't know. Have you ever been part of a smuggling racket? I don't know. Can you tell me what the password is to your disk? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. Can you tell me literally anything? You rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best. <sighs> okay, well, at least now we have his computer password. So, I shouldn't say his computer password, his floppy password. Disk password, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So it is stone. All right. A curse upon you who beholds this terror. The evil deeds of the whisperer of silent secrets remain undead. Within this prison of stone, broken only when the four corners of the world are bound together, when the first king ascends the throne again. And when the last Copan fool has labored till the end of time. Okay. Bull. Ritualist, ritualistic ball game originated 3000 BC. Did the mighty thing bull as a metaphor for warfare. The matchmaker hired by boy groom's parents to assess the suitability of the prospective marriage. Bride and groom were often married without ever having spoken a word to each other. Check to see if there's an exhibit on this for the temple quiz. So this is the answer that we were looking for to complete level two in the uh, temple quiz. Jade, jadeite, serpentine, all different shades of green. Maya considered jade to be divine, far more important than gold. Often used it to make both artistic and sacred objects. Six keys would likely be carved out of this. 
prison bears an intricate lock. Six separate keys must be assembled to fit the lock. Look at the riddle. Four corners of the world plus fool and king equals six. Each must represent one interlocking part of a bigger key. A cube has six sides. Perhaps they fit together into a cube. But where are these keys and what do they look like? Probably Pakal scattered them all over the Maya world so that they would not ever be put back together. Keys carved out of that must be jade, likely two that each bears an identifying glyph. Must track them down before it's too late. Someone else knows about this. Scribe. A mox collie from Shaman's Legend. See travel notes from summer of 72. We already found that. The monolith must be a mechanism for her punishment, and because she was most likely of royal lineage, Pakal could not permanently prohibit her from entering the underworld, so there should be a mechanism within the prison of stone to allow her soul to find its way out, as well as a mechanism for someone else to open the prison from the outside, the six keys. Uh, artifacts found as far north as New Mexico, numerous pieces lost in recent CCC sea heist, the North Key likely among them, but contact of the museums in the area to be sure. So the Chaco Canyon Cultural Center had one of the keys. Uh, Rutherford had another key. Let's see here. Let's Cuba, my great astronomers. Seems likely that they could have been aware on the island research records show one. Henry Albert IV Dottle, 605-555-3195. So write that down, 605-555-3195. There we go. Okay, and that was the last, right? Coupon, reports from the dig are good. Found Jay carving with rabbit glyph. Radio for delivery. Call. Is that the Beach Hill? I need to place Pakal in a safe place. I cannot trust anyone at this time. Moral dilemma, but can I argue that the end justify the means? And I need to send a loud and clear message to the culprit racing to open the monolith alongside me. I only hope I can win this round. City name means submerged crocodile. Crocodile is depicted in glyphs. Responsible for giving children names. All right, so there's all that. And then contacts Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, the snake. Okay, yep, we got that. All right, okay, so lots of information there. Let's try calling Chaco Canyon again, and then we'll try giving Henry Dottle a call. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. What can I do for you? I've just got to get my hands on a replica of that jade carving you lost. Do you have any ideas? Not off the top of my head but maybe one of my staff will have a bright idea. I need some time to ask around. Can you call back later? Sure thing. Feel free to call if you have any more questions. Okay, so now let's call Henry. So one, six, five, 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 three, one, nine, five. Daddle residence. Hi, may I speak to Henry Daddle, please? Speaking. Mr. Daddle, my name is Nancy Drew. This is a long shot, but I'm calling regarding a Maya artifact that was bought at auction in 1898 by one Henry Albert Daddle. Does that ring any bells? Sure. Henry Albert Daddle Sr. was my great-grandfather. You're talking about the jade carving, right? Yes, exactly. Wow, I can't believe my luck. Well, it's a lucky life if you ask me. So what can I do for you? I'm wondering if the artifact is still in the family. Forgive me, Miss Drew. Who are you exactly? I'm the deputy curator at Beach Hill Museum in Washington, D.C. I'm doing some research on jade carvings of the ancient Maya. I see. Well, I was the last to inherit the carving, but my daughter Penelope was so intrigued with it that I gave it to her. 
I'm sure she'd be happy to talk to you about it. Why don't you give her a call on her line? It's 555-3197. Will do. Thanks, Mr. Daddle. My pleasure. All right, so now we have to call Penelope. So, one, six, oh, five, 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 three, one, nine, seven. Hello? Hi, is this Penelope? Not even. Oh, is this 605-555-3197? Yeah, but no one calls me Penelope anymore. Except my parents, that is. To my friends, the art world, and anyone else who made it out of the 20th century, I'm Poppy. The art world? Wait, you're not Poppy Dada, are you? Ta-da! Ping, ping! You win! Who's this? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a detective. A detective? No way! So do you get to wear a sassy tweed hat and pick hairs off dead bodies and gross, creepy stuff like that? Actually, I try to keep a low profile, and a tweed hat, well, it's a little conspicuous. So, where'd you get my name? Don't tell me I'm, like, wanted by the FBI or something. That would be too scandalous. No, no. You see, it's all a big coincidence. Your dad's name came up in connection with a case I'm working on. Go, Dad. Don't tell me he's wanted by the FBI. I'll be so jealous. Sorry, Poppy. There's no FBI in on this case, and your dad's not wanted. Okay, what then? Someone is stealing Maya antiquities, jade carvings to be exact, and leaving this scary red handprint at the scene of every crime. Ghastly. So, what's with the red hand? It's printed with this stuff called cinnabar. Nobody seems to know what it means. All I know is the more I investigate, the more complicated it gets. Drama. So, where do the daddles come in? I got a tip that your great-great-grandfather bought a jade carving much like the ones that are being stolen. I'm hoping to take a look at it. You mean that ancient green rock with the weird symbol on it? I slapped some shoe polish on it and stuck it in one of my paintings. You're kidding. That's a one-of-a-kind Maya artifact, a piece of history. It's hundreds of years old. It's worth a lot of money. That's the whole point. Have you heard the saying that a work of art is never finished, just abandoned? Well, I'm taking that idea to the limit by making art that will keep changing as different people encounter, perceive, and interact with it. I'm tired of artwork that says, don't touch. I'm all about letting go, about sending my work into the world and seeing how it continues to become. Don't you see? It's an organic process. I mean, how can people really relate to art if it doesn't come to life and, and, and grow and die just like they do? That carving is part of something bigger now. It seems awfully reckless to me, not to mention the wrench it throws into my investigation. Oh, Nancy, don't be such a prude. Taylor's probably still got the artwork. At least, I don't think he sold it yet. Why don't you ask him? Tell him you want to see the piece called Deadly Midnight Snack. It's the one with the rubber shark. The one with the rubber shark? Yes, I've seen it, but I didn't notice any jade carving. Well, take a closer look there, sweets. It's in there. If you really need the carving to crack this case, why don't you just go ahead and take it? What? Poppy, you can't be serious. Sure, why not? After all, this is a chance to enact exactly what I've been talking about. The organic process. Inviting my viewers to interact with my work. The deal is, you can take the carving, but you have to put something in its place. I can choose anything? A light bulb? A magnifying glass? A pair of headphones? No, it should be something more organic. Stay with the title, Deadly Midnight Snack. And don't be afraid to go way out. As an artist, I can tell you that inspiration bites in the most mysterious ways. Okay, Poppy, if you say so. Right on. But let's keep Taylor out of this. He'd probably blow a gasket if he saw you tampering with the merchandise. That's all art is to him, you know. Merchandise. I'll make sure he doesn't detect a thing. Good luck, Nancy. 
Thanks, Poppy. Bye. All right. So one of the jade carvings is apparently <laughs> on a painting in Taylor's office. So let's go check that out. Through the door. Any news? Mind if I help myself to one of those scrumptious looking Oaxacan cookies? Be my guest. Mmm, yummy. Any news? May I take a closer look at that wacky Dada painting? Be my guest. I just had a call from Poppy this morning. She says she's in a really creative period right now. I said, please, sweetie, if you get any more creative, they're going to lock you up. <laughs> uh, pardon me a moment, Nancy. I'll be right back. I hope. Because he has to go in the bathroom. All right, so here Poppy is... Poppy said to replace it with something organic. Poppy said to replace it with something organic. There we go. All right, so the Oaxaca cookie goes on there, and now we have piece of the or one of the jade carvings I should say all right let's see here what now let's go to the museum and see if we have a piece from Prudence okay Joanna's not back yet And we have that password to get into the third video, so I suppose we could do that as well. And we're in the right spot. Okay, still nothing. Okay, let's go fill out that quiz again. This one that I need? Maybe. Quiz. Alright. Okay, so there we go. All of those are answered, and now we should be able to reach level three. Right? Yep, all filled up. Okay, so there is that. Come on. There we go. All right, and here is level three. to look at okay so here is another game going along with all the gods that we've learned so much about all right so let's see if I remember all these so this one I believe is Jaguar this one is oh boy I want to say it's wind yep okay uh, yum was corn remember that one. Um, oh, no, it's not, because there's two yums. That's ridiculous. Okay, this one is death. This one is trash.
almost got that on the fourth try. Let's see here. Skeleton. Preparation for the long and often dangerous journey through the afterlife, the Maya buried their dead with religious articles and objects they had used when alive. Tools such as grinding stones and flint points, jewelry and other ornaments, small figurines placed in the arms of the dead for companionship. Priests were buried with their books. Jade beads were placed in the mouths of corpses along with ground corn for physical and spiritual sus sustenance in the afterlife. Burial rituals, rituals for rulers were particularly elaborate to ensure a high level of status for the ruler in the afterlife. To learn more, be sure to explore the King Pakal tomb exhibit on this level. I wonder if Henrik would remember the answer. Let's hope he does. Okay. So there is that. And there's one other thing that we need to look at when we're down here. That's right here. Alright, if I remember correctly wrote down the date here. Let me see here. Where did I write it? Six Lamont. So six would be uh, one line and a dot. So that would be a line and a dot. And it's the one that looks like a globe, if I remember correctly. So Should be this one, if I remember. Hey, there we go. Okay. So now we need to talk to Henrik again. Uh, we need to call Chaco Canyon. And still need to figure out a way to use that ham radio. All right, let's start here, Flo. Good afternoon, young lady. This is a long shot, but do you know what animal Pakal was afraid of? You're asking the wrong amnesiac. According to your notes, Pakal made a six-part key to the Whisperer's tomb and scattered the pieces around the world. Do you remember anything about this? Six keys? Six keys? Six keys! Nancy, what are the four corners of the world? North, south, east, and west. Plus the first king, Pakal himself, and the Copan fool. When they're all assembled, they open the tomb. Don't you see? This is why I stole the Pakal, to prevent some other schemer from putting the key together. Do you think I should alert the police? You must keep this to yourself for now. It's your only hope of getting to the bottom of this. Henrik, I need to know where you put the Pakal carving. You're asking the wrong amnesiac. You rest up. I'll be back. I'll do my best. Okay. So, he gave us quite a bit of information there. Let's see if Chapel Canyon has an idea on how to get their piece to us. Chaco Canyon Cultural Center. Hi, this is Nancy Drew calling. Hi, Nancy. It's Sheila. Well, we racked our brains. Finally, one of my staff came up with the original box that the carving was packed in. The piece was encased in a tight foam cast to prevent damage during shipping. I'm not sure how much good it'll do you, but I can send it to you if you like. That just might work. Henrik left Beach Hill as his forwarding address. So I know what to do. I'll send it express. Thanks a million, Sheila. Good luck with your investigation. Okay, so the piece from Chaco Canyon is now on the way. Awesome. Okay, so I am still just having an absolute moment where I do not remember how to get that 
piece. Okay, well, we'll go back to the vehicle. here. for my students on that. Anytime a culprit or a suspect is not in the room where they're at, I, everybody else snoop! Okay, I think that we're... It's locked. Oop, there it is. There we go. Can I put the old one in here? No? Okay. I tried. Okay. It was way more difficult than it needed to be, but hey, we figured it out. Okay. So let's replace this radio tube. And do some Morse code. But before we do that, let's find out how to actually say this stuff in Morse code. Because we're going to have to. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to have to say is coatl, I think is how to say it. So that is C-O-A-T-L. So a C is a line dot line dot. And an O is three lines. And a is a dot and a line. A T is just a line. L is dot line dot dot and then we're gonna have to say lit J. So lit J is dot line dot dot. enjoy the Morris code puzzles. There's something just very fun about them. All right. So, turn this on. All right. It's 27, 30, 1. Transmitelo ahora. All right. So now we need to put in the password. So, Understanding of Spanish um, says that it will be sent as soon as possible. So let's see if we've gotten any packages. Still nothing. All right. I think the best thing that we can do now is probably. 
get some rest and see if we can move ahead. Um, we can try talking to Henrik again, I suppose, because we still don't know what the name of that thing is. That freaked Sunny out so bad. And moving forward, it is. First, we'll try Franklin again, though. See if we can get Joanna reinstated. Boswell, Jackson, and Rose, how may I direct your call? I'd like to speak to Franklin Rose, please. I'm sorry, but Mr. Rose is out of the office. Would you like to try back later? Sure. Thank you for calling Boswell, Jackson, and Rose. Okay, or not. Let's move ahead to tomorrow. Okay, we'll start by going to see the museum. Because we should, hopefully if we did this right, ha be having quite a few packages show up. And then we'll go check on Henrik, and we'll come back here and see if we have more packages. Hey, right. we did it right. Okay. Okay, and we know from one of the exhibits that having cross eyes is a symbol of status their eyes and there we go next piece so that was the box from the smugglers so that one's accounted for let's call not call go see Henrik and we'll come back and see if we have another package and then we'll go from there Good afternoon, young lady. All right. Will you be helpful this time? Henrik, I received a note from your friends in Copan. I've got the Copan fool key. I still need the Pakal, though. How's your memory? The tomb. Nancy, I hid the Pakal carving in the replica of the Pakal tomb at the bottom of the temple exhibit. Huh. Now, how did I think of that? And another thing. You'll need to get past that computer quiz. Sunny set it up with an impossible question. No one knows what Pakal was afraid of, but Sonny was petrified of the Coatamundi. It's an ornery bandit with a narrow snout and a long ring tail, much like a raccoon or a polecat. All right, there is that password we were looking for. You rest up. I'll be back. Be careful. I suppose it wasn't a password. It was just a quiz answer. But all right, so we have that answer which was one of the things we were also waiting for. So let's check shipping and receiving first, because we should be getting quite a few packages this week in the game. And we'll go answer that question. All right, from Prudence. Nancy, please relieve me of these horrid fake rubies by offering them to the Maya god of refuse if there is one. I have no love for imposters. That's my best impression of Prudence. Sorry, it was not very good. All right, so that part's done. Okay, let's go through the temple and use Kodamundi to answer that last trivia question. Yeah, we are definitely gonna finish this game today. We are rounding out this game quite nicely right now. I took the long way for rotating around, sorry. Oh, wrong way. So there is Pakal's quote unquote tomb. Why am I so turned around? Let's 
answer a trivia question. There we go. So we do not want to go through the door to exit out of here quite yet without going to Paul's tomb. So we're going to go back. Okay. So we are, so, oh, Jade and the Maya. To the ancient Maya, Jade was a sacred stone more valuable than gold or silver. Green like the shoots of young corn plants, jade was a symbol of life, associated with fertility and life-giving waters. It was even believed to have healing powers. The Maya used jade to make both artistic and sacred objects. Maya and nobility distinguished themselves by wearing jade ornaments. Kings were even known to have jade chips embedded in their teeth. The jade carvings you see here are replicas of those found in the sarcophagus of King Pakal. Typically, only royalty could afford to be buried with so much jade. Super interesting. Alright. So, we use our card here. It says, Pakal's Jade Mask. Paul was buried wearing a jade death mask so that the gods of the underworld would recognize him as a king and accord him with the same status and respect as he enjoyed on earth. Each of the jade pieces for this mask was individually carved down to the fine facial features. The pieces were then set into a wooden base. When Pakal's tomb was discovered hundreds of years later, the wooden base had rotted and the jade pieces lay scattered in the sarcophagus. The mask we know today, then, is a reconstruction. The original mask is on display upstairs in the main exhibition hall. And if we look, there is the missing jade carving and a glow stick. I'm just going to come very much in handy here for a little shortcut out of this area. So the reason why you want the glow stick is because without it, it makes walking through this tunnel very dangerous. So now we have our glow stick. We can see some glyphs along the walls. And there we go, we're out. Okay. So, currently we have one, two, three, four pieces. We still have the one from the Chuckle Canyon Center and another one that we don't have access to yet. Let's see if we can. make a mold from this foam core. So we're gonna take this. And fill it using this fun tool right here. Jackson and Rose. May I speak to Franklin Rose, please? Who may I say is calling? This is Nancy Drew. Just a minute, please. Nancy, how's your investigation coming along? I'm making good progress, and the Pakal carving is safe and sound. But I'm afraid I can't tell you everything yet. What in the world are you talking about? I'm sorry, but I can't explain everything now. I'll take good care of the carving, I promise. What can I say, Nancy? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. 
do what you have to do, but let's get this mess cleaned up, all right? So you'll call Joanna and invite her back to work? I'll call her right away. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. Okay, so Joanna is on her way back. I don't know if she gets right away or not. Let's go see if she's in her office already. We might have to leave and come back. Hey, there she is. Thanks for clearing my name, Nancy. Honestly, I mean, what kind of moron would I be to try and ruin my own exhibit? Anyway, we need to make up for lost time. I need you to go to the storeroom and start unpacking some of those crates. One of the pieces has a fancy security device on it. The code is 0677. All right, and that was that piece of information that we still needed. Sure thing, Joanna. I'll see you later. Semper ubi sabubi. Quit telling me to wear underwear. It's creepy. I don't tell you to. Okay. So. Here. There's a locked case. Zero, six, seven, seven. According to Henrik's notes, I need to make a key out of these pieces. Okay, so now we're going to put this whole thing together. So this piece, nope. Looks like that piece was in there, but no, it doesn't. No, it has to be that piece. Okay. Nope, that's not right. Come on, turn. Okay. So then it'll be this piece. Then this piece. And this piece. And this piece. Now I have the key! Alright, so now we have the key to get into the monolith. Alright, so now I believe we have one other puzzle that we have before we use that we just made. It should be right here. Looks like this side is missing a part. Something's missing here. Okay. Something's missing here. We know what's missing. It is the Zulkan uh, calendar stones, which are over in the museum. So let's go grab those. I can hold on to these stones for a very much I'm not sure I can hold on to these stones for a very much longer. I've got to put these things down. You are strong, Nancy. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Okay. So now we need the side that's missing the calendar pieces, which of course is gonna be the last side we find. There we go. Here. The poem said, when the first king ascends again. Which would be six Lamont.
This side looks damaged. Not damaged. I'll have to choose which side of the cube goes here. Start with the white side facing. Nothing happened. Nope. Okay, I tried. This should be the last step. Two, three. All right. I wonder what's inside. <gasps> oh my. It's blank. Who's your friend, Nancy? <gasps> Boo. Taylor Sinclair. Who'd you expect, the Tooth Fairy? Looks like someone forgot her beauty cream. I guess we can't all age gracefully. I'm sure she would say the same about you. You've been a top-notch assistant, Nancy, but I'm afraid you're just not going to make it in the art world. So it was Taylor Sinclair this whole time. Why are you doing this? Nancy, do you have any idea what that book contains? Help me out, Sinclair. I'm drawing a blank. The Whisperer's writings are the only known personal account of my life. The only written glimpse into Bacall's time anywhere. Do you know what I can get for that thing on the black market? I'm assuming quite a bit. But it doesn't belong to you! Finders keepers, I say. Nobody even realizes this thing has any contents. Won't they get a surprise when they finally open it up and find that it contains a 7th century scribe and a 21st century detective? Adios, Nancy. Okay, so it was Sinclair, and now we are stuck with not a lot of oxygen left in here. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if we can turn around. I'm starting to run out of air in here. Grab it, thank you. All right, there should be something over here. Put this piece in. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. I can't remember what that piece opened. I'm suffocating in here. Let me out. Oh, well, this isn't good. Oh, there it is. This may be the scribe's notes about Bacall. Come on, move, Nancy. It's too dark in here. I need a light. Oh my gosh. There we go. Phew, we did it. Behold, our heroine emerges from the tomb, like a mermaid from the sea. Meanwhile, the foolish villain stews in the sour soup of his own miscalculation. From deep in the recesses of time, a wise royal scribe whispers her thanks. And a priceless chapter of history is rescued from obscurity. Where to go, Nancy? What in the world? Ah! Confound you, Nancy Drew! Dear Dad, it was great to talk to you on the phone last night. I can't wait to see you back in River Heights where I can fill you in on the whole story. Can you believe that your own daughter was recently standing face to face with a real mummy? Now that the scribe's book has been recovered, I understand how important it is and why Taylor thought he could make a fortune selling it on the black market. The book contains one of the only personal accounts of Maya life in existence anywhere. 
I'm sure it'll be a tremendous addition to our knowledge of the Maya, once it's translated, that is. And now that Henrik's memory is back up to speed again, I'm sure he'll be itching to get to work on it. Taylor Sinclair won't be making any art deals for a long time, though, that's for sure. I guess I shouldn't be surprised about Alejandro's discovery that the Pakal Carving's provenance documents were faked after all. When Franklin Rose and the board found out, they arranged to return the artifact to Mexico right away. Mexican officials are so happy to have the artifact back, they have pledged a new era of diplomatic relations with Beach Hill. Joanna sure learned her lesson about making deals with shady operators like Taylor. The board has agreed to give her another chance, as long as she reforms her business tactics. And what else? Oh yes, Poppy Dada's announced a new direction in her artwork. All her new paintings are going to feature, what else, mysterious red handprints. So I guess everyone is taking off in new directions now. I'm going to stay and help this exhibit get launched. But I'll see you back at home in a couple of weeks. Have a safe trip home. Love, Nancy. Dear Nancy, Bess and George told me you're on a case in D.C. I hope everything is working out for you. I wish I could say the same for me. I'm planning on living here, but there's been some trouble. I think someone or something doesn't want me here. Please, Nancy, I'm afraid I can't stay here very much longer. I know you're busy, but I'm desperate. I need you to come out and investigate. Please say you will. Your friend, Sally. All right. So this is the first game where we get a preview for the next game. So that quick little clip that you saw is for Nancy Drew number seven, Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. So there we have it, three episodes, and we have finished The Secret of the Scarlet Hand. I must say this game has grown on me a bit as I've played it. Um, I definitely like it a more, quite a bit more now than I did the first time that I played it, which is <laughs> a good thing, because I did not like the game the first time I played it. Um, so yeah, this has been fun. I like that we get to see Taylor being very dramatic at the end, confounding Nancy Drew. Um, I do think it is kind of a little cheesy that we hear Joanna, Henrik, and Alejandro do a little bit of a poetry slam as we emerge from the tomb like a mermaid from the sea. I'm just saying if they were standing out there so that they could serenade us, they probably could have done something from the outside to, oh, I don't know, save us from the inside of the mon monolith, but I digress. That's probably me just being very, very picky. Anyway, that wraps up another playthrough. Thank you so much for joining me on this series that we just completed. Join me next week as we begin Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. Super excited. It should be really fun. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if, subscribe if you have not done so. And until next time, stay sleuthy.